All right, hello, welcome to another electronics video. Um, this time I have my oldest son, Amos, with me. Um, and he was the one who originally kind of inspired getting back into this stuff and making the videos in the first place. So really this is all his fault. Um, today we're gonna try to add some binary numbers. And I think we'll start, and we, we wanna do it with the logic gates directly. So we'll start, uh, figuring out what the logic is to do that, I guess, right? And we'll do one bit, and then if we can get that to work, we'll do, maybe we'll do some more bits. All right, so where do we start with binary addition? We have we have gates, we have to like and some stuff together, right? So if you have yes. two bits, if the answer to two single bit numbers can only be, what, zero, one, and two, um, so to do that, we will have signals, high signals for ones and low signals for zeros, of course. Um, that's basic digital logic. And so first we will have to create a circuit to add two bits together. So let's maybe try to design that and then we'll build it with the actual chips. Sound good? I think yes. that makes sense. I'm in an app called iCircuit. Um, this app is a pretty cool app I found on the App Store. It's for iOS, uh, iPad, iPhone. Um, and it can simulate like actual live digital circuits, but today I'm gonna use it for just an easy way to draw a schematic. Uh, I'll put a link in the description though. It's, uh, it's pretty cool, check it out. Um, I'm recording this from the future because the audio Amos and I originally recorded got lost because I did not record it properly. So I'm just going to do it myself over again here. Um, we're trying to build an adder and we have the logic of needing to have two bits come in. That's your input like A and B and have an output bit. And then because, you know, because you could potentially be adding one and one and get two, you need to have two bits worth of output. So you have your output bit and then a carry bit. So the first part we'll do is the logic for the first two inputs. So you have like A and B, let's say. Um, I believe I can label these. Okay, there. All right, those will be our two, our two input bits. So we have input A, input B. And an exclusive OR, which I think we mentioned before, if this one is true, then the output will be true. If this one is true, then the output is true. If they're both true, the output is false. And if they're both false, the output is false. So it's exclusive OR. It's like an OR, but only if one or the other is true, not both of them. And so that gets us the first bit of our output here. Okay, but we also need the carry bit. So if the input A is one and the input B is one, then the binary output is actually, you know, a zero on the, I guess it would be the first bit, and then the carry bit is one, right? It's just like what happens in decimal when you hit nine and you have to overflow to 10. Now you have a one and a zero, right? It's the same basic thing except it's binary. So for that, that case is only true when both A and B are true. And so that we can do with a simple AND gate, which returns true when, when its inputs are both true. Um, so then we can just draw this. So this will be our schematic. Boop. And then this is the carry bit. So this is basically our circuit. Um, I'll label it. Oops, got them backwards. There, that's our schematic. And that is the circuit we will attempt to build. Um, this is actually called a half adder because uh, there's no carry on the input side. So you can't really chain these together. This can only ever really add two bits together. A full adder has an additional input for a carry. So it has three inputs, your A, your B, and then your carry bit. And then you can chain as many of these as you want to add as large of a number as you want, but we might get there some other time. Okay, we'll need some AND gates. Well, we need at least one AND gate and we need one uh, exclusive OR gate. So, oh, and if you don't know, exclusive OR is a gate that takes, and we kind of covered this, but it takes its like two inputs and, and it outputs true only if one or the other input is true. And not um, both. And not both. 
Um, let's see, where's an AND gate? Here's two input AND gates. That's probably what we need. And then we need an exclusive OR. There we go, down here, quad in XOR gate. So for the AND gate, we need an SN74LS08N. Should be in this box. I think I got the right one. Yes. And then for the XOR, we need one of these, which is a SN74LS86N. All right, I think that's the right one. Okay, so we have the breadboard and we need to power it up. Oh, you know what? Which chip is which? <laughs> This is the end gate. This one is? Okay. Yes. We need that one probably second, so let's let's put that over here. And this is our XOR gate, right? Yes. So let's put it here maybe? I think I think I think here. Okay. We finally got it in there. It took two of us, but we got it in there. Okay. It takes um two. we will also need an input. Okay, so we have these little switches. Let's use one of these, maybe. We should do a two, I think. Oh, a two-bit input? Okay. Yes. All right, where do you want to put that at? I want it to be right here. Okay. Good. How about we take this off while we're working on it, just so there's more space. It might be a little bit easier. Okay, we'll zoom in a little bit. Maybe maybe that'll be easier to see. Hopefully. Okay, but we need to power this chip and pin out according to the uh, and this is the uh, XOR right here. XOR which is down here. So it looks like VCC is this pin and ground is that pin, which means that VCC right should be this one and ground should be that one. Okay. And then right here is minus. And this one's ground. There. Okay, so the chip should be powered up. So now we need to run the inputs from this switch. So on is on this side. So we need to pick one of the gates to use. So I figure we'll try using, well, let's see, which gate would be easiest to use. Since we're gonna run to the plus side, maybe one on this side. So, well, wait, how, do, how does this work? They have A, B, okay, so A is one input, B is one input, and Y is the output. That's what's going on there. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so that means if we want to use this side of the chip, we could use A4, B4, and then its output is down here. Let's try that, just for fun. So that means we need to wire the two switches to A4 and B4. So and these are here, ah, here and here. Yeah, right? It goes B and then A. And yeah. I think it should be A B. Why is it so Okay, so we have to go from here to here then, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Boy, these don't like to stay in there. Okay, we got that one hooked up. Now we need one more to go from the second switch to the other inputs. Okay, and then when these are on, we need to feed positive power into them. So I think that means the other side of the switch needs to be connected to plus, right? So we'll need some smaller jumpers for that little connection. Okay, the switch nice. should be hooked up so that when we turn it on, power should go, the current will go from here through here to the gate, and then the same for the other way. Now, of course, because we have these switches, we have to do the pull down thing. Otherwise, these will float, right, and we'll get weird results. So we need to pull these inputs down to ground by default, but through a resistor. Right, so um, what size? What size indeed? Let's go with a 1K resistor, let's say, for a pull down. 
Yeah, we're gonna pull the ground. Um, I guess we could do it up here, or we could do it on this side. I don't know which one's easier. Here is probably there. better. Um, I don't think that's lined up. No, it's not. <laughs> no, we don't want to have this problem that I had in the uh, <laughs> one of the other videos where I spent like <laughs> ten minutes doing it wrong. Okay. Yeah. There. Okay. And then oh, this... you know, I should cut this one down. This is this is really long. Maybe like here. I hope that's not too short. No, can you get this in there? Or can I get it in there? You just leave that. There. Yeah. Okay, is that right? Is that in the right spot? Yes. And we're pulling it down to ground. So when the switches are not on, then the current is allowed to escape down to there the voltage I guess will be low as a result but when we turn this on since there's no resistor on this side the voltage will be higher and so that causes it to be a positive signal so now we will need at least one LED for our output bit um, actually we're gonna need two because we're gonna need a carry LED right yeah but for now we can do this yeah because we don't actually we need the other gate to do carrying so okay we have our LED now let's put it over here somewhere because we'll have another chip and this side is the positive side but that's the side we want it to be true so we'll need a nice long wire to run over there from the output Wow! oh wow that's like the perfect length wire it's almost like we planned it but we definitely did not okay Go in. <laughs> well it seemed perfect do you have a hammer? a hammer? Hammer. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. There you go. You got it? Okay. All right, and then we need a resistor on the other side here. Let's use uh, what I've been using with the LEDs is the 220. So let's pull out a 220 resistor and we'll put that on the other side. Okay, and we need to go to, yeah, ground. That seems right. Okay, do we have enough to test this yet? We have our pull yes. downs. Input. I think we do, right? Yes. All right, let's power it up. Let's put this on here. And got to make sure the plus and the minus is on here line up with the board. I When I first got this, I actually had it the other way around, and I did a little test, and absolutely nothing worked. I'm lucky I didn't burn anything out. <laughs> okay, um, plug it in. All right, so... Right now it's off, so I think this will be off, right? Because that's, mm -hmm. this is a, wait, this is an XOR gate. Yes. So it should be off. Okay, we got nothing. That's good. Let's turn one of them on. All right, that works because uh, binary one plus, you know, another bit, or, well, essentially what we're doing is we're doing one plus zero, right? That's what we're doing. Yeah. And that's a one, so that's correct. So if we do zero plus one, that is also a one, that's correct. And if we do a one plus a one, now it's a zero, but that's because a bit should carry. And so now we have yeah. to display the carry, right? So, so it's also correct. we need another gate to do that. So let's turn this off and I'll just get that out of the way. And here's our other package with the AND gates. And for the carry bit, we need when both of them are on, correct? When both yes. our input bits are on. So let's just put it down here. And I know the power pinout is the same, so we can quickly just hook that up. VCC should be here, and ground is down here. So we'll need some wires to hook that up. Fun. Yeah, let's try that. Plus right. Yep. <laughs> That's too short. Okay, good. And ground. All right. Okay, we're powered up. And I think the gate arrangement is pretty much the same on these. Let's see, we used this one here, the quad yeah. two input and gate. Yes, it is the same. So it's the same. So uh, do we want to just do it on the same side again maybe the same way that yeah. might be the easiest way 
So then we could just run a jumper from from here over, right? There, that looks nice. And then the output's right next to it, and that'll be the carry. So we need another LED. Um, here's another LED. The plus side will be here. I guess we'll just do maybe skip a space, and we'll need another resistor, another 220 resistor. We've got them right here. Okay, while I cut this, you hook up the, the output to the LED. Okay, all right, that's hooked up. So that should be, that should be enough to see it, right? Yes. All right, let's hook up some power on. Okay, one plus one or something, there we go. Switch wasn't in there all the way. Okay, one plus one in binary ends up equaling zero one. Yeah. That's correct, right? It right. technically should be the other way around, I think, but yeah, whoops. Yeah, that's true. It should probably be on the other side. Well, we could fix that by just swapping them, right? We could. Or let's just uh, let's just move it. <laughs> we'll just do this, and that way we can get rid of this this wire and get a, a shorter wire that might fit better. And we'll take this resistor and move it over here. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Still works. But now I think it's in the correct order. Yeah. All right. That's pretty great. Zero plus zero, zero. Zero plus... One is one. One plus zero is also one. And one plus one is two. All right, we did yes. it. Yes. We have created a beautiful one bit adder. <laughs> All that work. Yeah, that was one bit adder. A surprising amount of circuitry just to add one bit. Now imagine, you know, most <laughs> computers now have 64 bits in them and they're doing math, you know, millions of times a second maybe billions of times a second. All right, I think that's what all we'll do for now, and uh, we may come back and expand on this and make more bits because that would be potentially interesting, but clearly the breadboard's going to get pretty crowded if we try that, but yeah. we'll see. All right, that's all for now, I guess. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give it the thumbs up and subscribe, and if you didn't, I guess do the opposite of those things, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Bye.